Hello, what's up guys? It's Preach, and what are we doing today? We're looking at the Priest. This is number 10, big day for me. Number 10 of all the classes we've looked at. So after this one, we've done one spec of every single class in the game, and we're going to start our rotation again. So if you have a, a spec that you're particularly waiting for, go ahead and throw it. Now's the time. Leave it leave in my comment. I'll see what I can do for you, okay? So which spec are we looking at today? We're looking at the Holy Priest. Why are we looking at the Holy Priest? I did think long and hard about which spec to do first on the Priest. Uh, because there's, every single spec is viable at the moment. That's just the simple fact of it. But why did I pick the Holy Priest? Well, people generally rolled the Priest to be the big healing class, didn't they? Let's be fair. Unless, unless they knew about the game beforehand or they rolled it as an alt, they generally wanted to be a Holy Priest. And Holy is the embodiment of all the healing of that Priest, isn't it? I mean, if you look at a tree and someone says, let's say you've never played Warcraft before in your entire life and you wanted to be a healer, so you're probably going to pick a Priest. And then you're going to look at the trees and say, well, shadow, that doesn't sound like healing. Or discipline, I don't know, I'm not really sure what that is. Holy, holy's the one. Holy's the holy class. So we find a lot of holy priests around and a lot of disciplined priests. What's the difference? Holy priest is about healing damage. I know that sounds obvious as a healer, but holy priest is more focused on healing damage. We have a lot of tools. Priests have a toolkit bigger than most. They are Bob the Builder. They are just absolutely loaded up. They are Bob Vila of the healing world. Okay, guys? He is the big man. He's got so many options to choose from. And Holy bumps that up a little bit more. Discipline is about damage reduction. More, more a case of preventing damage and reducing it and then healing it afterwards for slightly less. Whereas Holy, if we get a, a raid situation or a dungeon situation where people are taking loads of damage, that's when Holy starts to really shine. One thing I will say about Holy Priests, I think their talents are relatively dull. I don't think they're anywhere near as fun as a Shaman or anything like that or a Resto Druid. Their talents are very plain, simple, to the point, and maybe that makes it easier for new players to get into healing, I don't know. Uh, but for me, a little bit dull, a little bit boring, but I'll try and make it interesting for you anyway. We're still going to do the glyphs, the talents, the spec, the gems, and then we're going to do the full heroic demonstration as per usual, guys. Let's jump straight in. This is Preaches on EU Sylvanus. Go ahead and armory him. I'll put his link down in the comments. Item level 347. He's not particularly bad geared at all. Um, we, I, I, I leveled this guy quite a long time ago. He was probably my third level 85 at the very beginning of Cataclysm. And he joined in in a couple of alt raids. He's done some tier 11 content. But I haven't really played him since. As I've say, I've been focused on leveling other characters and producing videos for you guys. So he's around 347. He's not too shabby. What's our stats as a priest? Well, intellect, big number one. Intellect is more mana, more spell power. So we want as much intellect as possible. Because we're in this mindset of a holy priest, of healing as much damage as possible for as little as possible, intellect is our big one. We want our heals to heal for a lot. Very simple understanding there, guys. Our next one is spirit. Spirit is our mana regeneration. That's what spirit is for us, okay? Very obvious, very simple. More spirit, more mana regen we've got. So you might think to yourself, well, do I need to gem for spirit? You don't want to put 40 spirit gems in your blue sockets, guys. So that's no good. Intellect is worth more. The more our heals heals for, the better. So if we do have a blue socket and we want to pick up a set bonus, which you generally do want to heal early days. If you're early gear and you want to pick up your set bonuses because you need a bit more haste and a bit more intellect. We're going to be uh, looking at spirit int gems, okay? Just to bump up our intellect and our spirit accordingly. What comes after spirit is haste. The more haste we have, the faster we can cast our heals off so we can beat them Lovely holy paladins and them resto druids and them shamans firing off all their instant heals. We're going to get in there fast with our nice, big, fast, hasted heals. And also it's going to increase the tick on our renew. Our great heal that we can throw around and just forget about. Our nice heal over time. A hot, as I'll call it through the, the video. So we've got our renew. And the more haste we've got, the extra ticks that generates. Obviously in the advanced guide, I'll look more at how much haste you need to hit those sort of targets. But in early days, we want to get some nice haste. Uh, and after that comes mastery. What does that mastery do? It's called Echo of Light. Doesn't it sound like badass? I'll tell you one thing about Holy Priests is although their talents aren't interesting, they have brilliant names. Whoever sat in the office at Blizzard and decided the names for the talents of Holy Priest needs a medal because he had to take a, a spell that basically did something like buff healing and give it this badass cool name. So fair play to that guy. So we have this lovely Echo of Light, which basically means that when we throw on a heal, we can get an extra hot. Okay, not a renew, an extra hot called the Echo of Light, which then heals a little bit more after you finish healing them. And it also builds up a little bit, depending on the size of the heal that you threw on them. Mastery is not amazing. It's really not that amazing. Uh, uh, don't be, certainly don't be taking away haste to get mastery. But it's slightly better than the last stat, which is crit. Why don't we want crit? As I'll show you as we go through the talents, we get a lot of crit from talents, guys. It, um, crit is great, don't get me wrong, but we don't 
certainly don't work towards getting crit. We want to get rid of our crit because we get crit from talents, okay? Very simple idea is we want to get rid of all the crit and bump up our spirit. If it hasn't got spirit on it, get some spirit. If it hasn't got haste on it, but it's got spirit, get some haste. And if anything left over, that should be mastery, okay, guys? Very simple idea. Moving now, and show you the gemming. So if you've got a red slot, guys, you want to throw in your 40 intellect gems. If you've got a blue slot, you want to throw in a 40 intellect, 40, 20 spirit gem. And if we've got a, uh, a yellow socket, go ahead with a 20 and 20 haste rating gem. Okay. In the early days, it's sure as you get more advanced gear, you want to be looking to maybe skip a few set bonuses. But in the early days, I'd like to pick up all bits and bobs of stats just to get as a nice rounded character. Okay. It's not the same as a DPS class where just more in wins. We need all sorts of things because healers have to deal with so many different situations all the time. One situation can change within seconds and we need to be ready to deal with that. And that situation might call for more haste. It might call for more raw healing. So we're going to get a little bit of a bonus all the way down. We've got a leg enchant, just 95 in 55 spirit, so on and so forth. As you can see, we've got spirit on every item. Like this ring here, the kibble had mastery on it. So we needed some haste. So we're going ahead and reforged off our mastery into haste. Always looking at those priorities, guys. Intellect. We can't reforge for intellect, so gem as much intellect as you can. Then we're going to get spirit. Spirit is our next one. Then haste. Then mastery. Crit way down at the bottom. Okay, guys. Really easy stuff. Nothing special. For our major gem, we go with a 54 intellect and 2% maximum mana. Really nice. And it needs two yellow gems, which is where your intellect haste gems come from. Okay. Really easy stuff. So, moving into our talents. And as I said, we're going to see some cool names for some particularly uninteresting talents. Divine Fury. Doesn't that sound awesome? That sounds like that thing that should nuke the world. That should be like, oh, well, I've cast Divine Fury now, baby. You should be going down. Ain't the case. It reduces the cast time of our heal. Yeah. Reduces the cast time of your heal. Divine Fury. I cast faster. That's all it is. Okay, guys. So then we're moving to Empowered Healing. Just buffs your healing. Nothing special. Improved Renew, at least that's got the audacity and the balls to man up and be a boring name for a boring talent. Increases the talent heal, uh, the amount healed by Renew by 10%. Desperate Prayer. Nice, nice little spell, this. If you read it, instantly heals the caster for 30% of their total health. Okay? So it's really a good instant save. So amazing. Surge of Light. And look at the graphic of Surge of Light. That looks like it should... You look like you should radiate nuclear energy. You should be a superhero. Basically, we have a 6%. 6%? That's so low. Chance when we cast one of our heals to have this ability to cast our flash heal instant and be cost no mana. But look at the graphic. Look at the name. And it's 6% chance. Come on. Anyway, as we said with our Resto Shaman guy, if you haven't checked that out, it's on my channel. We have various heals for different situations. Our go-to heal is heal, which is very cheap. Doesn't heal for a great deal, but we can cast it almost indefinitely. Then we have our greater heal, which is slightly bigger, but also quite cheap. And then in emergency situations, we have flash heal. So flash heal heals for a lot and costs a lot. Okay, guys, it is really our emergency heal. And in our early days of Roach, we want to be avoiding flash heal as much as possible. So while we're casting our normal heal, we get this chance to just throw out a, flea, a free flash heal. It's great. Okay, so if we get it, happy days. We can just cast it away on our tank. We've got a nice big fat heal. And it's cost us nothing. So that's why we take Surge of Light. Because when it does proc, it's good days. Inspiration. This goes along the idea of when we heal, we get a crit. We get our crit from talents. We'll get there soon. Don't worry. We reduce the physical damage taken of that target by 10%. Really, really nice. Okay, guys? Really nice. It's just going to be a nice 10% damage reduction. And the less damage people take, the less we have to heal. The more mana we have, the better we are in the long run. All works together nicely. Divine Touch. Look at the graphic. Look at the graphic. Your Renew will instantly heal the target for 10% of their total periodic effect. But look at the graphic. It looks like I'm shooting laser beams with my freaking hands, man. But they're so boring. So anyway, yeah, a Renew heals for a set amount over time. It's a hot. So when we cast the Renew, it's going to heal for how much that would have healed over time. 10% of it is going to be instantly healed. Certainly not an emergency heal. If your tank's on 1% health, I won't throw a Renew and think, happy days. <laughs> That's not going to work at all. But it's still a nice big bonus Passively healing for a little bit more. Holy Concentration. Increase the amount of mana regeneration, mana regeneration from spirit while in combat by an additional 30%. So while we're in combat, our spirit is most effective when we're out of combat. It works at its full power. While we're in combat, that is reduced. Through Holy Concentration, we're just continuing to regenerate all this mana. Really, really nice tank, guys. A must-have, basically. You must have it, otherwise you will go oom very, very quickly. 
Lightwell, the most dubious of all holy talents in the universe, and no wonder it only needs one point to get it. Lightwell is that is. Let me put it this way to you guys: there is no better <laughs> healing per mana spell in the whole game than Lightwell. It's amazing. You can drop it before the fight and get back to full mana. It's absolutely amazing, and it heals for shit tons. And they don't even need to target it. It doesn't ch lose their target when they do it. They can just mouse over it and right click it. And nobody will ever use it. How good is that? It's sort of like <laughs> sort of like be being given a brand new Porsche 911 or a Bugatti Veyron and not having the keys. There's your car. Unfortunately, there's no keys for it. Amazing. But Lightwell, I use Lightwell personally as my own heal. If I'm taking damage... That's all I rely on it for. I know I've got light well down. It doesn't matter if nobody else uses it. It's not going to cost us anything before the fight to throw a light well down. It's there. If people use it, all the better. If they don't, it doesn't matter. If we take damage, we can click our own light well and keep ourselves going and healing other people. That's generally what I consider light well for in a dungeon. In a raid environment, it's certainly better to have light well because people are more organized or hopefully more organized, but they should be able to use the light well. I know in when we raid and we've got bosses like Beth Tillak or Lord Rylith, where we're getting heavy, heavy AoE damage all the time. We're all spamming the light well in melee. We absolutely love the light well. We can keep DPS in, just click a light well and keep keep ourselves alive. Tome of Light. I love these names. So good. Reduces the cooldown of our Holy Word spells by 30%. We'll get to Holy Word in a minute. Don't worry about that, but that's what it does. Spirit of Redemption. I knew people, when this talent came into the game, who literally ran to the trainer, respect their priest to get Spirit of Redemption, and then asked to be killed or jumped off cliffs because this effect is so cool. We turn it into a giant badass angel, and everybody has seen the Spirit of Redemption when you've died while leveling. He's, he's that big badass angel, and we turn into that. Basically what we do in the dungeon, there's chances we will die a lot from things like we may have a bad tank, anything like that. We might end up with a fear into a bad situation. We're certainly not going to stand in fire, guys, because we are ballers, and ballers don't stand in fire. So when we die, we turn to Spirit of Redemption. It gives us 15 seconds to just keep going, costing no mana. So we could throw flash heals, which are fast, expensive heals. Doesn't matter. Free while we're in Spirit of Redemption form. Our big prayers of healing. We cannot be probably save a wipe by having Spirit of Redemption, because by the time we actually die a second time, after 15 seconds, our group should be full health anyway. Serendipity. A little bit iffy in the early days. When we cast our heal or binding heal, if you don't know what binding heal is, it heals the target and yourself, but it's very expensive, like flash heal. Uh, the cast time of your next grey heal or prayer of healing is reduced by 20%, and the mana cost is reduced by 10%. So what does this say to us? Stacks a couple of times. It says to us that we are in an emergency, and we've had to throw, throw out a flash heal. It's cost us a lot of mana. We've then gained the serendipity buff, so we can actually throw out our cheap heal, either a greater heal or our prayer of healing, for a lot less mana and much faster. So we don't need to start spamming flash heal. That's the idea of serendipity, okay? And it also procs from our surge of light. So when we get this situation where the guy's really low, we're thinking, crap, we're going to have to use flash heal here. We're going to go ahead and flash heal. We're then going to get serendipity so we can throw out a really fast and cheap greater heal to sort of counterbalance how much mana we spent on flash heal. Okay, guys? That's the idea behind serendipity. Body and soul, basically, this talent is to speed up your runs. Because we don't really use Power Word Shield as a Holy Priest. It's not particularly great. We don't buff that spell at all. When we use Body and Soul, all we're going to do is go ahead and speed up the guy by 60%, whoever we cast it on. It's not great for raids, because especially if you've got a Discipline Priest who's bubbling lots of people, they might have the uh, Weakened Soul debuff, which means they can't be shielded again. So, basically... With this talent in dungeons, our tank's finished the pull, he's moving on. This is how I use it, by the way. You can find your own uses for it. Your tank's moving on to the next one. As we've looked at in our tank guides, the sooner the tank gets to the mobs and starts tanking them, the less chance of losing threat, the whole much easier the run is. So I go ahead and throw a shield on them and spin, and spin them off. Uh, it also gives our cure disease a chance to uh, cleanse one poison as well. So now we can dispel magic, diseases, and poisons, okay? That's what Body and Soul's all about. Now we'll get to the only interesting talent, and the one that the whole spec is built around, guys, and that is Chakra. What is Chakra? Chakra has so many cool names <laughs> mixed into it, and it, look at that tooltip. That is the biggest tooltip in the history of mankind. It's worse than a tier 8 bonus from vanilla. What does it do? We activate Chakra. We, generate, we get this spell, Chakra. This is not bad. There it is there, that beautiful little weird symbol. Looks the same as that, surprisingly. So we go out to start healing our dungeon. We throw on Chakra. What happens then is we can choose what kind of healer we want to be. Do we want to be a single target healer or an AoE healer? 
Okay. And it's called Serenity and Sanctuary. Serenity is single target, Sanctuary is AoE. What we do is we throw on our chakra. Let me activate chakra and I'll show you. Right, that's chakra activated. We've got our chakra buff there. Our next heal, flash heal, gray heal, binding heal, prayer of mending, blah, 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 causes to enter a chakra state. Basically, if you cast an AoE heal, you will enter chakra sanctuary, which buffs all your AoE healing. That's what it does. Reduces the cooldown of your circle of healing. It's just a big, so we have a load of AoE damage coming. We're going to go ahead, click chakra, and then we're going to cast an AoE heal, and bump, we're going to turn blue. You ready for it? You ready for this epic moment? Let's zoom in. It's going to be awesome. Prayer of mending. Holy crap, we've turned blue. We are now in Chakra Sanctuary. We have buffed all our AoE healing. We've buffed our Renew by 15% and reduced the cooldown of our circular healing by 2 seconds. So if you look at bosses like, um, like I say, Bethilak, Lord Rylith, or going back to some Tier 11 content, we look at um, Chimeron, when we have that big massacre and everyone takes healing. If we're in Chakra Sanctuary, boom, one pair of healing is buffed by so much and it's just got it. AoE heal the crap out of everything, and that's where priests start popping out ridiculous healing numbers. What's the other one? The next one is Chakra Serenity. This is great for healing tanks. This is our single target one. So we'll go ahead and click Chakra again because we want to change states. Use our normal heal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boom. We're yellow. And now we're in Chakra Serenity. Okay, guys. What does Chakra Serenity do? It gives us a nice big fat crit bonus. Of 10% to our direct healing spells. So we now have that 10% crit, which is why we don't want crit on gear. Really easy idea to understand, yeah, guys? So, and it also refreshes our renew. So let's say I we've got a tank. We're keeping renew on him. We just want to keep that rolling now. So our heal is going to, boom, refresh our renew all the time. So it costs us nothing to keep doing that. And we've got this renew ticking all the time. Really, really easy. And we've got this big 10% crit buff. Our next talent, and we're not going to worry about the Chastise, that's a DPS one. Uh, it's not interesting for our dungeons at all. We're going to move into the next talent which you have to take, which is Revelations. Now, Revelations changes our Holy Word spell. If you don't know what your Holy Word spell is, it's what you get for picking Holy. You get Holy Word Chastise. That's nice target for damage and disorient them for three seconds. No good for us as a healer. So when we go into this and we get Revelations, when we enter a Chakra state, our Holy Word changes. You see, it's flashing and lighting up because we've got this new ability. So, if we're in the single target Serenity state, we now have a heal. It's very cheap. Instantly heals the target for 11,000 and increase the critical effect chance of your healing spells on that tank by 25%. So, we've gained 10% single target healing anyway from being in this chakra state. Then we've used our Holy Word spell and buffed that by another 25% for 6 seconds. And it's on such a low cooldown. Let me show you. Watch my bar. There's our Holy Word. Boom. Cast the Holy Word. We then get Holy Word Serenity, increase the chance of direct heals by 25%. And it's only on a 10 second cooldown. So we can keep that up so much. We're only going to be 4 seconds without that buff on our targets. So we're going to be throwing out some constant, big, critical heals. Very cheap. And that's the idea behind it. When we turn into, let's change our tracker state back to the AoE one. There we go, we turn blue. Our Holy Word has changed again. See, I didn't do anything there. It changed on its own. Now we get this. Holy Word Sanctuary, the big fatty AoE heal. So if you're wondering how that's generated, that's how it comes from. Now, the problem with it is it's very, very expensive. Doesn't heal for a great amount. It's certainly not healing rain or effluence. It's not that great, guys. So I try and avoid it unless you really, really need it, or you're really overgeared and you can play with your mana all day. It's not that great. Really isn't. It looks badass, don't get me wrong. Like many things in the Holy Tree, it looks fucking cool. But it's just not that great. So those are your main things. You, you always want to be in a chakra state, depending on what you're doing, and you can switch them very quickly. Should you go into the wrong one by accident, doesn't matter. You can change it again very, very quickly. Let's go into our last talents. Test of faith. Increase your healing by 12% on targets below 50% health. Don't need to say anything there. If they're below 50%, you heal more. Hmm. Circle of healing. Nice, quick, fast heal, which can be buffed by being on our AoE uh, chakra state and reduce the cooldown of it. A circle of healing, just a smart heal. So it will pick people. If you're in a raid and you've got loads of people, it will pick the people who need the healing more. In a dungeon, it's just going to heal them off. So we generally want to fire that on cooldown. Look how low cooldown it is and how low mana it is. We generate so fast. Very low cooldown. Just a nice spammy heal we can keep using on cooldown. Very cheap. If you really want to pad your meters, just keep throwing out circle healing on cooldown all the time. Our final one is our big raid cooldown. It's Guardian Spirit. Not used so much anymore, guys. Uh, sadly, not because Powered Barrier is so amazing from Dispriest. So in a raid environment, you're probably going to be asked to go Discipline. I understand that. But in dungeons, Guardian Spirit can be handy in some situations. Let's have a little read of it. 
Calls upon a guardian spirit. How cool is that? So watch over the friendly target. The spirit increased the healing received on the target by 40%. So don't forget that passive effect. If you need to put out a ton of healing on a guy and you don't want to waste a load of mana casting flash heals, use your guardian spirit. Okay? Increase the healing received on target by 40%. And also prevents the target from dying by sacrificing itself. How important is that? It prevents it. Okay? This sacrifice terminates the effect of the, but heals the target for 50% of their maximum health. You can stop death. That's right. You can stop death. That's cool, isn't it? That's really cool. So if you know you're running into a situation, let's say you were drinking and you had some hero tank, uh, you've just been through a massive AoE pull, you really oom, uh, you're drinking up and suddenly your tank charges off into the next pack, he's going down to 10% health, he's not blowing any cooldowns. We've all seen these tanks if you've been a healer. Go ahead and throw your Guardian Spirit on, you can't die. Happy days, you could go AFK and have a smoke. You can't die, unless he dies and then it regenerates, and then you need to heal that bad boy. But until it buys you some time, and that's what's important, because at the minimum he's got to go back to 50% health anyway. So if you get that Guardian Spirit on, boom, happy days. Really important cooldown, guys. Use it whenever you need it. Going into our other tree, Mental Agility, reduce the mana cost of your instant cast spells by 10%, so that's your circular healing, and you renews nicely drop down. Twin Disciplines, increase your Shadow and Holy Damage by and Healing by 6%. Nothing to say about that, 6% Healing buff. Failed Shadows, why do we take this? Decrease the cooldown of your Fade Ability by 6 seconds. Eh, not that great. Reduces the cooldown of your Shadow Fiend by 60 seconds. A whole minute off your Shadow Fiend. That is awesome. Shadow Fiend is our nice big mana cooldown. It's like Mana Tide for us, okay guys? We will be using Shadow Fiend whenever it's going to top us back up to full mana. We need that for Shadow Fiend. And then we've got it on cooldown again. And we've got a 60 second reduction. We can use it again. We've got a macro for our Shadow Fiend. I'll show you in a second. And our last one is one point in darkness. Nowhere else to really put this. But increase our spell haste by 1%. And we like haste as we said. So 1% spell haste is a lot of rating. So by getting 1% spell haste from darkness, we're just laughing. Quick look at glyphs. This is what I use. Glyph of Lightwell. Because uh, I was raiding, this is why I use Glyph of Lightwell. I think it's a fine Glyph. Increase the amount of charges by 5. It's a lot, it's expensive if you have to recast Lightwell in combat. But while we've got all these charges up, it's really helpful. Glyph of Prayer Healing. Your Prayer Healing also heals an additional 20% of his initial heal over 6 seconds. Well, if you're healing in a raid, guys, you want to throw Prayer of Healing on separate groups. Because remember, it heals the party. So by doing that, you're keeping this extra 20% ticking all the time and really buff putting out some good solid healing. But for us, if we need to do a big AoE heal, we're going to get this extra 20% out really good. Glyph of Renew. Increase the amount healed by your Renew by additional 10%. So we've buffed it from Talents. We've buffed it with the Glyph. Really, really nice, guys. So we're going to keep our Renew ticking a hell of a lot in dungeons, as we'll demonstrate soon. Glyph of Circle of Healing. Your Circle of Healing spells heal one additional target. Nothing more to say there. Glyph of Master Spell. Reduce the cast time. You don't want to be casting a real long master spell when you need to get a load of debuffs off and then heal the party. Reduce the cooldown on that nicely. And Glyph of Prayer of Mending. The first charge of your Prayer of Mending heals for an additional 60%. Why is that? Because we generally, if we're moving and our tank's taking damage, we need to throw out that Prayer of Mending quickly so he gets a nice big heal next time he gets hit. And that's going to buff his health up nicely. Uh, Glyph of Shadow Fiend. You receives 5% of your maximum mana if your Shadow Fiend dies from damage. It's very rare it happens, but if it does, you want that extra mana. Glyph of Levitate, so we don't need to carry feathers. A Glyph of Fortitude, so we, when we buff people, it's not going to take all our mana. If someone dies and gets re resed and we need to rebuff them, it's not going to chew, chew up all our mana. Really easy. So that's our talents and glyphs, guys. Very basic. I did mention macros here. I'll have a quick look at those. Our main macro is our Shadow Fiend macro, slash cast the Shadow Fiend, slash cast Shadow Crawl, which is a blink for our Shadow Fiend, so it gets the target instantly, and slash pet attack. The problem with Shadow Fiends is sometimes, one, they attack the wrong bloody target, and the second one is they don't always attack. And I don't know why, they're just a slight bug, so we, by using this macro, we make sure that we cast our Shadow Fiend, it instantly gets the target, it's instantly attacking, instantly getting us mana. They don't last very long, so we need to make sure that while it's up, it's doing everything else. 